G'day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to discuss the TAN-TBN crossover method for draining oil on a gas engine, and why it's a terrible idea, and why the industry needs to stop doing it. Now first up, a disclaimer. So if your engine is in warranty, um, you really need to listen to this disclaimer. Basically, if you don't follow the manufacturer's requirements for oil drains and for oil analysis, you risk losing your warranty. So, if your OEM says that you need to condemn your oil on the TAN-TBN crossover method, that's what you have to do to stay in warranty. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. Now let's talk about why that's a terrible idea. So where does the rule come from? Um, most of you have probably seen this method if you uh, operate gas engines, where we plot, um, let's say, TBN reduction over time. Now, TBN is measured in milligrams um, per potassium hydroxide, um, and we generally plot it against oil hours to see this depletion. Um, a lot of uh, gas engine operators, uh, particularly in the natural gas engine space, are starting to use uh, TBN reduction of 50% as their condemning limit. That's also a terrible idea, and I'll do a separate video on that. Um, but this is kind of the the, the uh, genesis of, of what we're trying to do. We'll also, you know, generally find that the TBN doesn't go to zero. It kind of flattens out, um, and it becomes asymptotic at some kind of value. Um, maybe that's before it gets to 50% of its original starting value. Maybe it's after. And then generally what we do is we plot the tan on the same graph. And wherever the crossover is, we say, okay, at those oil hours, we're going to drain our oil. Now, why would we, why would we do that? Um, let's assume, for example, that uh, these are straight line relationships, just to make things easier. Um, the tan-TBN crossover rule gives us a lot of safety margin. So effectively, um, it means that if either the tan or the TBN test uh, is incorrect, then I'm not going to leave my oil for too long. The reason for this is that the, both the TAN and the TBN tests have very poor repeatability and reproducibility. I'll get into what that means in a uh, separate video, but effectively repeatability is um, whether the same lab would get the same result with the same sample, and reproducibility is would different labs get the same result with the same sample. So, because there's quite a margin of error on both the TAN and TBN tests, um, imagine that, let's say, for example, your lab was scoring uh, TBN a little high and TAN a little low. That would mean that this is your condemning limit. Whereas if the reverse was true and TBN was a little low and TAN was a little high, then your condemning, condemning limit would be here. And so we would get a vast difference in the amount of uh, life we could get out of our oil. And so just taking TAN-TBN crossover became this uh, rule of thumb for the industry about how you could be very conservative with your lubricant um, and basically just not harm the engine. The other origin of the rule is this misnomer around the name. So we've got two things, total acid number and total base number. And it doesn't help that they're both measured in the same units of measurement. And we have this idea that TAN and TBN are mirror images of each other. And a lot of that goes to our basic understanding of high school chemistry. Because, of course, acids and bases sit on the pH scale. Where the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, acids sit, you know, closer to 0, bases sit closer to 14... Um, and so we think of acids and bases as being mirror images of each other. The fact is, though, that the pH scale is for aqueous solutions. What do I mean by that? Well, it's usually for water-based solutions. So, for example, with, if I put uh, you know, hydrogen chloride into water, it dissociates and forms hydrochloric acid. Similarly, if I put uh, sodium hydroxide into water, it also dissociates and becomes... Um, a, a base solution. But the thing is, with lubricants, it's not water. It's organic uh, compounds. It's, a, it's like I've described it before, a, a soup of all different 
uh, hydrocarbons. That means that the pH scale isn't really relevant for what we're talking about. So, you know, how should we think about these two things? Well, first of all, let's think about where they come from. So, acids in uh, that are measured by tan come from really two sources. First of all, you've got products of base oil oxidation, and these are organic acids. So, as the as the lubricant breaks down in service, um, the oxidized products are generally um, uh, carboxyl organic acids. And I'll do uh, you know another video about um, oxidation mechanisms. The other place that they come from is contaminations. Um, as an example, if you have H2S in your fuel gas, um, H2S, when it oxidizes um, and combusts, ends up forming uh, SO2. Um, and that SO2, if it ends up in any kind of water, will form H2SO4, which is, a, which is sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid. So you get organic acids and mineral acids, and both of these are picked up by the TAN, or total acid number test. So you should think of acids as being um, unwanted products of the lubricant being used in service. Base comes from a TBN additive. So it's TBN additives are over-based detergents. Again, I'll have to do a separate video on exactly um, how that's achieved. But they're, they're on purpose, right? The, the lubricant formulators put TBN additives in there on purpose. Um, and TBN depletes in the same way that other additives deplete. So um, ZDDP, for example, will deplete over time. And so now that we put these against each other, TAN and TBN are not really the opposite of each other. One is talking about a breakdown in the oil and the other one is talking about an additive. Okay, so what's a better way of doing this? Well, instead of uh, doing the standard TAN and TBN plots, I'm suggesting, and I've done this with a few customers, is to say, let's plot TBN against what I care about. So the reason that we care about TAN and TBN and we, why we care about the acid content of the oil is because we're concerned about corrosion. So why not plot against metals which are susceptible to corrosion? And what you'll see is, let's say, for example, if I were to plot TBN as it reduces, I should see an increase in copper as TBN reduces. And similarly, as TAN increases, I should see an increase in copper. Now, why wouldn't I see an increase in copper if the total acidity of uh, the engine oil has increased? You know, if the corrosive potential has increased, why don't I see an immediate jump in the copper values? And the primary reason for it is corrosion inhibitors, right? There are two different additives that are working to protect uh, your, in this case, uh, bearings. You've got the TBN additive package, but there's also the corrosion inhibitors. Unfortunately, there is no used oil analysis test for corrosion inhibitors. It's not part of the standard slate. So we'll never know how effective the corrosion inhibitors are until we plot TBN and TAN against something like copper or lead. And a way that you can kind of come to grips with this and maybe give yourself and uh, your maintenance team a little bit more confidence is to do copper, copper corrosion testing. So what they do here is they actually take an actual copper strip and subject it to a lubricant. And then after a bit of time, they will then compare that against a standard, um, you know, copper strip corrosion standard. And they'll be able to evaluate and give it a score. So if you could give yourself the confidence that, for example, um, a used oil, let's say an oil that had been used for a thousand hours, you send that off for copper strip corrosion testing and you came back with a, with a value of a 1A or a 1B, you could be very confident that the corrosion protection properties of your lubricant at the end of your oil drain are almost as good as at the very beginning of your oil drain. And that level of sophistication is really where I think the industry needs to head. 
I hope this has been really helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. But otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.